Right, today we're going to look at two irons, two uh, totally different irons. I've got the um, Sim 2 Max OS, so that's OS oversize, it's huge. And then right at the other end of the spectrum, it's the P7MB. One's a 5 iron, one's a 7 iron, but they're both exactly the same loft. So my thought process is, uh, well, what do they do differently? How does the ball get from A to B? Is it all down to loft or the going to be some other things that impact on it and the main one being the size of these things because it's incredible how different they are in terms of their profile but anyway let's get into some balls and find out right now the first notable difference i briefly mentioned was the size and profile of these clubs and to be honest with you i'm shocked at how different it is when you put them side by side it's incredible um, all the things you would expect, all the differences that we normally talk about, which is the top line, and then we talk about the sole, and then you talk about heel to toe, and it really is chalk and cheese in terms of the type of clubs. And my kind of debate is always, um, there's always the, the loft debate, which people say that clubs like these, Super Game Improvement Irons, all they are is effectively pimped up five irons so we've got a 27 degree loft on a seven iron and a 27 degree loft on what is a traditional five iron but my question is this if i handed you these two clubs right now which would you choose in terms of which would you expect to be the easiest to play with and when i say easiest the most forgiving um, if you're a beginner which one of these would you choose even at the top end of your game, I know from my perspective, looking at this five iron now compared to that of the seven, this thing scares me to death. So what I want to know is this, lofts are equal, but what happens when you uh, effectively measure characteristics, ball flight, launch angles, ball speeds? What is the difference between these two in club type? Because I think it's going to be a massive, massive difference, but I might be wrong. And the only way to find that out is to collect data and let's analyze the difference between two clubs that are 27 degrees in loft, but in every other way, totally different. Right, so we need a starting position, and that is uh, me hitting balls, collecting data with both of these, and seeing where we are in terms of first to carry distance, which in terms of loft should be the same. But I'm wondering what's gonna impact on both those numbers in terms of the spin number, I think will be different. I'm expecting the launch to be different, and therefore peak height. But we shall see, and that's what I'm about to start doing. But the bit that I'm really interested in in terms of Trackman 4 and what I hope to sort of dive into is this, which is the impact location. So where I strike the ball, where do we get club on ball and how then does it differ? Because my thought process is that with this five iron from the P7 MBs, if I start to get a few high toe, I'm expecting ball speeds to drop off and I'm expecting to be punished. If that happens with the seven iron in this Max OS, I'm expecting to get away with it. So my thought process is, rightly or wrongly, that this will be, the max, a much more forgiving club. But the idea is, that's a perception, is that gonna bear out in fact? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll start with, uh, we'll start with the seven iron. I'll start it in a few balls and we'll start collecting a bit of data. Um, and I will do exactly the same with the five iron. I can't stress enough how different these are in terms of the size, uh, the mass, the profile, is huge. But I was a big fan of this club, so uh, I think what it does, for what it is, and that's an absolute solid start, that's right down the middle, it does it extremely well. It sounds and feels really well in terms of what it is, in terms of uh, the, the, the category it's in. It is big, it is bulky, but like I said, I took it out on the course, this idea that you can't shape a shot. I mean, I can't not shape a shot. That's gone from left to right. So again, I think that's a bit of a, bit of a myth. I'll carry on it in balls. Just to give you a rundown on that, which you've just seen the ball flight. 116 ball speed, 6,600 spin, 159 carry, launch 18.393 peak height. That's with a game improvement iron, seven iron, nice easy swing, 80 mile an hour club head speed. And that's it, every kind of number you would hope it to do. I'll carry on collecting a group of numbers with that, and then I'll do exactly the same with the five iron of the MB. Right, so first job done, data collected, and the interesting thing is from purely a perspective, first of all, of carry distance, 
it is very, very similar indeed, not a lot to split them. The one thing that is very noticeable between the two clubs is the one that you'd expect, is the sound and the feel. One is a forged club, one isn't. And again, sometimes that appeals to some. Some other golfers, it means nothing to whatsoever. The interesting bit for me, and again, I can only speak from sort of uh, my level, the ability of, that I have, is that I never found one or the other much difference in terms of uh, ease of use. And what I'm not seeing yet, and I know I've certainly uh, sprayed it about a bit in terms of the uh, across the club phase, it's interesting to know in data, and I've not looked at it, what those drop-offs are. So we took it out onto uh, a par three at St Andrews, and uh, you can see that I hit a number of shots. First of all, it was five straight with the, um, with the, with the Sim OS. Uh, I had a pretty decent range of balls. I think it was uh, swinging easy, swinging as I would expect to do out on the course in reality. So a couple of mile an hour slower than I would normally be uh, with seven iron in hand, but I struck the ball well. The club launched incredibly well. It seems to sit down on the green, but we shall see, like I said, in data what it does. And then I switched up into the five iron um, of the P7 MBs. And uh, I've got to say, I was surprised. The performance again was really good. I think we struck uh, three reasonably close and uh, a little bit wayward with two others. But overall, the differences between the performance of the two was largely down to my swing that I put on them, and that was about it. So at this stage, I'm probably a little bit surprised, I think, uh, as to the differences in terms of what I highlighted, forgiveness, and maybe not as great as I thought they were. So the last bit now really is to just delve into that data and see if there's any gaping points that I've missed, those kind of things like spin, how did the ball launch, what was the descent angle like, that's the last bit to have a look at. And, uh, but I must say at this bit, I'm a little bit surprised, I think. Right, all testing done, and um, I've got to say, I enjoyed uh, taking out on the course in terms of uh, the Trackman Simulator. That was really enjoyable. It was also great to see the sort of shape of shot, which we've never been able to show before, and see how they, that reacted, at least on simulator greens. But the information that we've been able to now extract from that is really, really interesting. I promise there's stuff in here that I would have never been able to share with you before, and a real eye-opener for me on a personal level. I said at the beginning um, what I thought might happen, and I think it's fair to say I got it wrong, massively wrong, and the data will sort of show that very shortly. Two things I want to mention. We've got the length of shaft differs slightly. The five iron is 38 inches. The seven iron is 37.25. And the other major difference, and this is a major difference aesthetically as much as anything else, what people will struggle with, is 5.7 mil of offset on the seven iron in the SIM product, and only, what is it, 1.75 in the uh, in the MB, so there's a huge difference there. But numbers on screen for you now. I'll start with the five iron, which was the MB. Right. So what you've got um, going through the numbers very very quickly: five seven nine nine spin on average, which arguably could be. Don't forget, there's a five iron suggested that could be a little bit too high. Carrying one fifty nine, we've got one flyer in there, which was um, that sort of one sixty seven ball with a real low spin as well. Launch very consistently, 17 degrees for a five iron, really good. Um, launch, you know, peak height, first of all, of 82 feet and a land angle of 44. I think the thing I will say about the five iron and the way it performed, it was very, very consistent. As you've seen from where it landed on the green, it was kind of uh, two or three were really good. Uh, the odd one or two wasn't so good. And yet again, that is about the performance of the individual, nothing to do with the club. Then go into the data of the seven iron. And uh, what you'll see is uh, 6,000 spin on average for a game improvement iron. But don't forget these lofts are identical. So in theory, the spin, if we class these two as seven irons, or we class them both as five irons, whichever way you want to look at it, the spin was higher on the Max OS product. Carry difference, uh, carry average is 159. And there was one ball there, what I would call, um, well, a bit of a duff and we'll come to that later, but that was 151. So obviously that changed things considerably uh, in terms of averages. Launched 17.3 with one ball there was again, very low off the club face, 14.3. So that made a huge difference to the average and probably with that one taken out the equation would have been more like 18 degrees plus and it's same pretty much with the peak height. 85 was the average peak height, but I would think that would have made a huge difference with that outlier taken out 
as with the descent angle of 45.6 degrees. So a major difference there as well. Um, but the interesting bit is not that. I think if you put the data side by side in terms of averages, what you'd see is two sets of very comparable um, numbers and they're both exceptionally good. I was surprised at just how equal they were in terms of there was the, the loft was the same, but I was surprised at the other categories and I was probably more surprised at just how well the, uh, the seven iron and the Max OS product performed. But there's two shots in each of these that I want you to have a look at in terms of this impact location that we've never been able to look at before, which is really, really interesting. I'll start with the five iron first of all. And the, the, the image you see in front of you now is a f right out the middle, first shot that I hit. Um, we've got, um, what is it? 114 ball speed, 6461 spin, 157 carry. It's just a perfect set of numbers. Then I want to show you this next screen. And this is a ball that was struck way off center. It's very much um, out the heel area. 80.7 was a club head speed. 114 was a ball speed. So we literally dropped 0.8 in terms of ball speed. It still managed to get a spin number of 6611 and a 155 carry. So only, two, and 16.7 launch as well, which is the interesting bit. So two very different strikes there in terms of the location, but the performance was almost exactly the same. So that idea that how big is the sweet spot on these clubs, and don't forget we're talking about a bladed club here, which my perception would have been that anything other than out of the middle, you'd have been punished quite severely. And I think you can see there, that mightn't quite be the case with the way these things have improved. But in even a more severe case, and I won't go into too much detail, trust me, but this last one now is now with the Max OS, the 7 iron. And I'll start off again with a shot from right out the middle so we've got a good barometer. And what you'll see is right out the middle, we have got 79.8 uh, club head speed, 118 ball speed, 5.8. Uh, in terms of spin, 166 carry. And then if I throw this one up, and I'll show you without looking at the numbers uh, to the right of screen, first of all, look at that impact location. I've literally hit it off the bottom two grooves. I hit the mat before I hit the ball, and as you can see, that impacted on the club head speed, 75.6. We're not almost, what is it, four mile an hour off the club head speed, still manage 112 ball speed, 58 spin, a 156 carry. And more unbelievably than any of that data is a launch angle at 18.9 degrees coming off those bottom two grooves. So for me, the interesting bit was, and I could have never give you that information in the past without this kind of, um, without what Trackman has provided in this very first video, I'm astounded by what we've seen, but it just goes to show just, I think to be fair, how impressive these clubs are in terms of forgiveness. That bit that I've always measured with an opinion is now very much backed up with that kind of data. And the bigger surprise was that it's on twofold really. If you looked at those numbers, um, if you're analyzing both sets of numbers side by side, and you forget what they are in terms of the bottom of the club, whether they're the five iron or the seven iron, and we just say these are two irons that are tw lofted 27 degrees. What would be your choice in terms of what performed best? Because if I'm honest with you, looking at that data, looking at the consistency of data, I'm surprised at just how well a seven iron did. I'm surprised that if I had both clubs in hand and I wanted to carry that 160 distance with a launch angle that is coming off the seven iron, with a spin number that's coming off the seven iron, with a, with a descent angle that is coming off the seven iron, it is hard to say that they weren't the best set of numbers. And that is the biggest shock I've had because from, um, We've always had this debate about game improvement irons of late are just pumped up, whatever you want to call it, jacked five irons in disguise. And maybe they are, but they perform incredibly well. And like I said, just putting these together as two clubs that are lofted exactly the same, then it's, and not forgetting, don't forget, that's the other thing is slightly shorter shaft as well. So a little bit more control perhaps in the seven iron. It's really difficult to split and uh, a real eye opener for me on a personal level. That's it, I've got no more to say. It was an interesting first video. We're finding our way round Trackman. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm very conscious of not going overload in terms of data, but trying to bring stuff that I think is relevant and um, 
that, that is important for you to know and see. And I think in this uh, instance, we've probably done it, but we will get better as we go and as I start to understand quite what Trackman has to offer. But first time out, we're more than happy with what we've seen. Comments down below. Have you liked the new data? Have you liked the new uh, for slightly new form of review? Uh, so comments down below with that like button. Subscribe if you don't already. And that's me done. I am uh, can't wait, to be honest with you, to get on to the next video because the ideas are flooded in terms of what we can do with this new piece of kit. And I think the, uh, the, le the, the level of content is going to go up a notch, or at least I hope so anyway. Right, thanks for watching. See you soon.